The new track profile begins at around 15th South at the South Salt Lake Frontrunner siding and where Union Pacific has several yard leads that keep switching operations separate from the mainline traffic. The tracks descend at 1%, which is typical for freight trains, and is the same slope I used in my design. The slope holds constant below the 13th South Viaduct and up to the bridge below I-15, where it reaches its full depth. This is something that still confuses me, because, in my opinion, the tracks do not need to be at full depth at this point. We're still over a thousand feet away from the first road crossing at 9th South, and I cannot think of any good reason why the tracks would need to be at full depth already and below a structural cap. My original design had the downward slope beginning about two blocks further north than in these plans, or just north of the 13th South Viaduct, which would shorten the project area significantly. Moving on, the screening analysis assumes that the existing bridge over I-15 would need to be replaced to accommodate the full width of the train box. They are right, of course, but I had assumed that this could be done later on, as part of a separate I-15 project. With so much space in the train box reserved for future capacity and expansion, there is no need to rebuild this freeway bridge immediately. That omission alone could reduce the cost estimate of the train box by a few hundred million dollars. 